My father left my family when I was two years old. And I was raised by a single mom who had to work and who struggled at times to pay the bills and wasn't always able to give us the things that other kids had. There were times when I missed having a father in my life. There were times when I was lonely and I felt like I didn't fit in. So I wasn't always as focused as I should have been on school. And I did some things that I'm not proud of. And I got in more trouble than I should have. And my life could have easily taken a turn for the worse. But I was, I was lucky. I got a lot of second chances. And I had the opportunity to go to college and law school and follow my dreams. My wife, our first lady, Michelle Obama, she has a similar story. Neither of her parents had gone to college and they didn't have a lot of money. But they worked hard and she worked hard so that she could go to the best schools in this country. But some of you might not have those advantages. Maybe you don't have adults in your life who give you the support that you need. Maybe someone in your family has lost their job and there's not enough money to go around. Maybe you live in a neighborhood where you don't feel safe or have friends who are pressuring you to do things you know aren't right. Where you are right now doesn't have to determine where you'll end up. No one's written your destiny for you. Because here in America, you write your own destiny. You make your own future. And that's why today I'm calling on each of you to set your own goals for your education and do everything you can to meet them. But whatever you resolve to do, I want you to commit to it. I want you to really work at it. I know that sometimes you get that sense from TV that you can be rich and successful without any hard work, that your ticket to success is through rapping or basketball or being a reality TV star. Chances are you're not going to be any of those things. The truth is being successful is hard. You won't love every subject that you study. You won't click with every teacher that you have. Not every homework assignment will seem completely relevant to your life right at this minute. And you won't necessarily succeed at everything the first time you try. That's okay. Some of the most successful people in the world are the ones who've had the most failures. J.K. Rawlings, who wrote Harry Potter, her first Harry Potter book was rejected 12 times before it was finally published. Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team. He lost hundreds of games and missed thousands of shots during his career. But he once said, I have failed over and over and over again in my life, and that's why I succeed. These people succeeded because they understood that you can't let your failures define you, you have to let your failures teach you. You have to let them show you what to do differently the next time. So if you get into trouble, that doesn't mean you're a troublemaker. It means you need to try harder to act right. If you get a bad grade, that doesn't mean you're stupid. It just means you need to spend more time studying. No one's born being good at all things. You become good at things through hard work. You're not a varsity athlete the first time you play a new sport. You don't hit every note the first time you sing a song. You've got to practice. The same principle applies to your schoolwork. You might have to do a math problem a few times before you get it right. You might have to read something a few times before you understand it. You definitely have to do a few drafts of a paper before it's good enough to hand in. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask for help when you need it. I do that every day. Asking for help isn't a sign of weakness, it's a sign of strength. Because it shows you have the courage to admit when you don't know something, and that then allows you to learn something new. So find an adult that you trust, a parent, a grandparent, or a teacher, a coach, or a counselor, and ask them to help you stay on track to meet your goals. And even when you're struggling, even when you're discouraged, and you feel like other people have given up on you, don't ever give up on yourself. Because when you give up on yourself, you give up on your country. The story of America isn't about people who quit when things got tough. It's about people who kept going, who tried harder, who loved their country too much to do anything less than their best.
failure, uh, it's terrible, but, <laughs> but, but necessary. Uh, if, 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 you, if you are going to try something hard, if you're putting yourself out there in some way, there are going to be times where you screw up or you don't succeed. And, and I think that the most important thing is to learn from those failures uh, and to have a sense of resilience and be able to examine what is it that I did not succeed at, why didn't I succeed, and what do I need to do better. When I talk to young people, I always tell them, worry less about what you want to be and worry more about what you want to do. We know that too many young men in our community continue to make bad choices. And I have to say, growing up, I made quite a few myself. Sometimes I wrote off my own failings as just as another example of the world trying to keep a black man down. I had a tendency sometimes to make excuses for me not doing the right thing. But one of the things that all of you have learned over the last four years is there's no longer any room for excuses. Excuses are tools of the incompetent used to build bridges to nowhere and monuments of nothingness. Well, we've got no time for excuses. You have to remember that whatever you've gone through, it pales in comparison to the hardships previous generations endured, and they overcame them. And if they overcame them, you can overcome them too. Spirit of excellence and hard work and dedication and no excuses is needed now more than ever. If you think you can just get over in this economy just because you have a Morehouse degree, you're in for a rude awakening. But if you stay hungry, if you keep hustling, if you keep on your grind and get other folks to do the same, nobody can stop you. And when I talk about pursuing excellence and setting an example, I'm not just talking about in your professional life. Be the best husband to your wife. Be the best father you can be to your children. Because nothing's more important. I was raised by a heroic single mom, wonderful grandparents, made incredible sacrifices for me. And I know there are moms and grandparents here today who did the same thing for all of you. But I sure wish I had had a father who was not only present, but involved. Didn't know my dad. And so my whole life, I've tried to be for Michelle and my girls what my father was not for my mother and me. I want to break that cycle where a father's not at home, where a father's not helping to raise that son or daughter. I want to be a better father, a better husband, a better man. It's hard work that demands your constant attention and frequent sacrifice. And I promise you, Michelle will tell you I'm not perfect. She'll, she's got a long list of my imperfections. Even now, I'm still practicing, I'm still learning, still getting corrected in terms of how to be a fine husband and a good father. But I, I, I will tell you this, everything else is unfulfilled if we fail at family, if we fail at that responsibility. I know that when I am on my deathbed someday, I will not be thinking about any particular legislation I pass. I will not be thinking about a policy I promoted. I will not be thinking about the speech I gave. I will not be thinking about the Nobel Prize I received. I will be thinking about that walk I took with my daughters. I'll be thinking about a lazy afternoon with my wife. I'll be thinking about sitting around the dinner table and seeing them happy and healthy and knowing that they were loved. And I'll be thinking about whether I did right by all of them. So be a good role model. Set a good example for that young brother coming up. If you know somebody who's not on point, go back and, and bring that brother along. Those who've been left behind, who haven't had the same opportunities as we have, they need to hear from you. You've got to be engaged on the barber shop, on the basketball court, at church. Spend time and energy and presence to, to give people opportunities and a chance. Pull them up, expose them. Support their dreams, don't put them down. We've got to teach them just like what we have to learn, what it means to be a man. It's up to you to widen your circle of concern. 
that everybody, no matter what you look like or where you come from, what your last name is, where it doesn't matter. Everybody gets a chance to walk through those doors of opportunity if they are willing to work hard enough. Success may not come quickly or easily, but if you strive to do what's right, if you work harder and dream bigger, if you set an example in your own lives and do your part to help meet the challenges of our times, then I am confident that together we will continue the never-ending task of perfecting our union.